this is me 30 years ago. Do you think, just from looking at this, that I was a good student when I was in college or I was a bad student when I was in college? I was a bad student. I was the worst kind of bad student because I didn't have bad grades. I figured out how to have decent grades somehow without really learning anything. Along the way though, I've learned a lot, but I had to learn it the hard way. And I've stepped on a lot of landmines over the years, especially in terms of trying to learn. So I have a pretty good map of the minefield now. For anyone who is in college, it's important not to miss unless you absolutely have to. Stay on top of your work. Don't let it pile up on you. You want to set aside time each day if you possibly can to do your work. Spreading your work out works a lot better than trying to do it all at once. Let's talk about AI for just a little bit. Talk to your instructor about what is allowable. Every instructor is different. But of course, do not just let generative AI write an assignment or write a paper for you. The writing assignment that you do is legitimate study. Every assignment they give you is for a purpose. It's not just to check something off the list. See, the thing is this, when you start a class, it kind of feels like you're running a race. You go and then you do this assignment, this test, this quiz, and you're checking stuff off the list as you go. And you get to the end, you take the final exam, and woo, you've crossed the finish line. You're not running a race, you're building a house. And that writing assignment that you're doing as part of the building. Listen as well as you can. Of course, you're not going to want to pay attention to everything in every class, because some of it you're going to find boring. In those instances, curiosity is your best friend. Ask questions about the material. That's the best way I know to engage with it. The best sentences in the world end in a question mark. Remember the acronym TOP, T-O-P. That stands for think on paper. You want to get thoughts out of here and out here where you can see them. Just key terms, key phrases, stuff that's gonna trigger your memory later. And then you can go back after the class and make more detailed notes and fill in the blank. Structure your study, work in breaks. You study for 25 minutes, you take a five minute break. Back at it for 25, break for five. Know the key terms. Embrace the jargon. The jargon in any subject, that's the language of that subject that unpacks the rest of it for you. Change the context. Study in different places. Have you ever heard anyone say you want to have one place that you study? I understand why they say that because they want to try to help you establish the habit, but do not do that, okay? First of all, you can't. You don't happen to be in your study place all the time. Study at home, one room at home, in a different room at home, be in the library, study outside, find different places. When you're sitting down somewhere, you've got the environmental context all around you. You've got visual cues. Your brain can become dependent on those visual cues to help you cue up the memory of what you're trying to learn. Study in different places. Don't just read and read and read material like I did. Elaborate on it. Elaboration is thinking about the material. Not just trying to memorize it, but thinking about it. It helps you to remember it better. Here's what you do. You do have to read the material. You do have to watch the videos that your instructor gives you. You know, you have to take in the information, but you also have to spit it out. Instead of just reading it over and over again, hoping that repetition will beat it into your head, just read a section, enough that you think you can kind of get your head around it. You look away from the screen or away from the page if you're reading, and you ask yourself two important questions. What did I just learn? In a nutshell, summarize it to yourself. What do I know already that has anything to do with it? Learning is taking new information and attaching it to something that is in your head already. Number three, test yourself. Practice testing is legitimate study. It's not just a way to show you where you are and how, how well you know it. It's actual study. One tremendous use for AI that I have, under, I have learned is you have the information that you want to try to learn copy it, type in, make a practice test based on this information, you hit paste, you hit go, and in a matter of seconds, you will have a practice quiz. And one final thing, don't halfway do it. 
whatever you're trying to accomplish, don't halfway do it. Let's do the very best we can. And when I say we, I mean literally you and me, because you have set big goals for yourself. And I have set big goals for myself. I haven't accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish yet. I'm not that old. Let's just do the very best we can. There's no guarantee that we're going to be successful. All we can do is simply focus on the process. We know the outcome we want. We can't just wave a magic wand and make it happen. We have to focus on the process day in and day out. There is something you have to do before you take any test. Take only two minutes and ask yourself a very, very important question. If I do the very best I can on this and it still goes off in the ditch, what is my plan? What am I going to do next? I could do a post-mortem. I could try to figure out what went wrong. I could get some feedback from my instructor. Put a plan together. If you don't deal with that fear that it's gonna go off the rails no matter what I do, if you don't deal with that fear up front, then it is going to haunt you. It is gonna stay in the back of your mind and bug you to death, and then it's gonna to come to the front of your mind at the worst possible time, and you know what time that is, right in the middle of the test, and it's all you'll be able to think about. You're not setting yourself up for failure. You're expecting the best, but preparing for the worst. Let's just do the very best we can and focus on the process and see what happens. What I'm about to show you is a shocking image. <laughs> that is me 30 years ago. Take a good look at this, however fuzzy it is, and now take a good look at this and know that this is going to happen to you also eventually. Can y'all do that? I cannot. I'm this dude back here trying to get up off the floor. That's me, yeah, just trying to stand up, all right? You have to ask yourself, if I'm gonna let ChatGPT write my paper for me, would I want my professor or my instructor using ChatGPT to grade it for me? <laughs>